Hey everybody, welcome to eTrailer.com. I'm Bobby, and today we're taking a look at the Swagman XC2 two-bike platform rack here today on our 2012 Honda Accord. Now guys, it's going to be a very nice, decent way of getting yourself started to get your bikes wherever you want to go. What's great about the XC2, not going to be too expensive, so it's not going to be breaking the bake. However, you're still getting a nice, stable platform to actually get your bikes to where you want to go, because that's the name of the game, right? When we get there, when we get there safe and with our bikes in working order. And that's what we're going to get with this guy. Um, you are seeing frame mount holds on here though. So this is going to kind of eliminate you from carrying your carbon frame bikes. If that's something you really want to look forward to, you are probably going to have to start getting into more expensive bike racks, more higher end options. Um, and with that, uh, you're definitely going to want to look for something that doesn't have frame contact as that frame contact will end up warping and deteriorating those carbon frame bikes. So but with that, we're not going to have any trouble, really, I don't think, with any kind of step-through bikes, women's bikes, or kids' bikes. Sometimes with these frame designs, they are something to look out for. One thing about this guy, this track can slide all the way down here, so your hooks at its lowest point are going to be very close to the base of our platform, which means we're going to have no trouble bringing down these hooks on top of our bikes to make sure they are nice and secure, even if we have some irregularities in that horizontal contact for ourselves. And with 35 pounds capacity rating too, we're going to have a decent time getting whatever really we want up on here. Of course, as long as we're staying within that road bike and mountain bike range. Now, you start looking up uh, for e-bikes and stuff like that, again, really going to have to start changing, uh, really looking at a way different class of carrier to get those heavy big bikes to where you want to go. Now, the other thing to look out for that as well, if you do have any fat tire bikes, your bigger bikes might have a harder time utilizing this carrier as well, as um, part of it really is kind of getting these wheels to sink in between our wheel hoops here. So you can kind of see how ours are sitting today. Helps give it a little stability, of course. Just gets it nice and cinched down. Gets it in that well to go ahead and start ha having a little bit of help to hold on to it. And with that 35 pound capacity rating per bike as well, you know, um, definitely not going to be probably ex exceeding that too much with your bigger bikes. So that's probably something we're not worried about innately, but it is something just to keep in mind when you're weighing your options of how to mount your bike up on here. So these ratcheting arm systems work just like a ratchet, so we just simply open up that lever right there. That allows us to swing it down. We can, of course, push down on our bike. Won't be pulling up anytime soon unless I go ahead and do so. I like to just go ahead and take them off all the way, too, when I am uh, kind of messing with these guys and take my bike off, as they're just one more thing to kind of try to fight and mess around with, which can definitely be a pain. Now, the one thing I will say that is kind of in the detriment of the XC2, it doesn't have a way of tilting away. And as you guys are going to see here today, when our bike is still mounted up, we actually do have trouble here getting this fully open. So we're going to make contact right there on those handlebars or our handlebar here today. So kind of stinks that we can't get this all the way open. Now, if I needed to, I could easily sneak in here and grab something smaller. Um, but you know, if we had a cooler or something, it would be kind of a bummer not to quite get there. Um, so if that's something that really interests you and you kind of want to still stay somewhat in this ballpark, um, the Kurt two bike platform rack, um, it's kind of one of their more bare, um, bare bones models. It is very similar to the XC2 and how it folds up and how it can kind of store. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of how it looks personally, but you do get that tilt away um, and you're kind of staying within the same kind of restrictions that this system is posing with you. And it also isn't going to be breaking the bank, of course. So you don't have to look too far uh, up the chain for bike racks if you're wanting that tilt away. So that one can be a nice little pickup. Uh, if that's something that really interests you. Again, though, it's not going to take us too much time to get these bikes off. So if that's something that we're really worried about, quick access to the cargo can be an issue. But if we're just doing that while we're at the trail, all we have to do, guys, press in again on that arm. That's going to be my last contact on here, though. So make sure we are holding our bike. We don't want that tilting into our vehicle or ourselves causing any damage. And then we can simply grab our bike, though, and just walk it right off. So I'm just going to walk to the side here and get it set down. Definitely doesn't take too much time though. And mounting it, just as easy. You can imagine, just walk it up, get those arms set, and then uh, get them in those wheel hoops, and then yeah, you're good to go. And then we just simply bring these guys down, just like so, so that way we're nice and secure on ourselves here today. So that's awesome for us. Now one thing we do wanna watch here is gonna be our measurements though. So big ones we're gonna have to watch out for is gonna be our clearance right away. So 
As those front wheels go up, the back will go down. And since we're in our Honda Accord here, we're not going to have a lot of clearance to work with innately as it is somewhat of a smaller sitting vehicle or a lower sitting, I should say. So from the very end of our hoop system here to the ground is going to be putting us right around 15 and three quarters of an inch. Now, one thing I will say with that, let's go ahead and just call it 15 just to be safe as our wheels are gonna be hanging underneath it. And that is one thing that you would hate to see from the XC2. Because those wheels hang a little lower, we could be in danger of actually hitting our, our bike first. Uh, and that could be really bad because we don't wanna be pushing that frame up into our other frame contact. That could end up even just warping a regular bike. So the one thing I will say, definitely watch your clearance on these guys, especially in your sedan. Now, the XC2 has a nice little rise in that shank as you guys are seeing, which definitely helps. And 15 inches is nothing to scoff at. It's definitely going to be plenty for most of your highway, regular street driving. The only thing I'd be really concerned, though, is like if we're taking this off of um, or taking this up some very steep terrain where we're really climbing, have a really uh, severe degree of incline. Or uh, if you're doing a little off-roading in your, in your Honda Accord. Not that I think we are going to, um, but definitely something to watch. We don't want to be damaging our bikes. But with 15 inches, I think we're in a pretty good spot as long as we're being conscious of it. But we can actually see how much length we're actually adding on here too. Any hitch mounted accessory is gonna be adding some length to our vehicle. And so from the back of our bumper here today to the very end here of where my hoop is sitting, looks to be putting me right under 20 inches there. So 20 inches at max, really a hair or two on the inside of that. But that's definitely not adding too much room on here, about 10 inches per bike. That's actually crazy, crazy small if you ask me, especially if you start comparing it to some other carriers. So I like that we're not adding too much uh, length here innately because the XC2 doesn't actually have a way of folding away at all. Um, and that's, like I said, that kind of goes hand in hand with that tilt away capability. That's really the only big thing that the XC2 is missing and it's definitely something I can live with. Um, one thing that's awesome about it too, we actually can go ahead and get these guys folded down. So maybe you guys don't have this always on your Honda Accord. Maybe you have a hatchback at home too. This can be a great way of simply taking out this little bottom pin here. It just goes right there in that hole and then laying that down. And you can imagine if we did have a uh, hatchback, we could be able to swing this all the way open now. But that's just nice if you guys have some other vehicles in the family that you guys can uh, trans kind of switch this guy between if you need. We can go ahead and reset that. But we do have a way of actually bringing these arms and we're gonna do pretty much the same thing. We have these little pins that we need to pull. To do so, I just simply pull straight out, bring up my arm like so, and then slot that back in. Already, we're nice and secure. And I can repeat that process on the other side until I am nice and secure there. So you can see how much space that has really shaved down on the sides. Now we're not worried about that turning radius. Not that we were before though, because we weren't really that much extended from this back corner, but it definitely goes, uh, a little goes a long, a long way in almost every regards. And one thing that's really cool about this too, guys, after this position too, if you wanted, you actually can take your shank out of here as well. So what's cool about that makes it really, really easy to store. The XC2 becomes excellent for city driving. You know, this becomes nice to take it off, store it somewhere in the apartment, in a closet somewhere. I know a lot of us might have those balcony closets. This becomes a really nice spot to go ahead and throw in there with all our other lawn equipment. And it doesn't take up too much room, especially with taking off that uh, shank. Makes it really easy to store for itself, which is great. Um, but yeah. We can go ahead and move our way to the inside here though, and as you guys can already probably see, we are working with an inch and a quarter shank here today with our inch and a quarter receiver. Now this guy is actually sold separately. This is the e-trailer hitch pin alignment collar. This is the inch and a quarter version, of course. There is two inches, two inch hitch versions out there as well, but most of us probably aren't gonna be needing them. This becomes great because we can just simply throw this right here in our shank. And now every time I take this on or off, as I walk it up, it's gonna perfectly align my back pin here. So it's only gonna let it to go right here. And that makes it really easy to go ahead and throw in our anti-rattle, uh, our threaded anti-rattle hitch bolt. Now these guys are very standard across the industry, but you still love to see them. They're gonna be bringing this online to one system, making for a nicer, smoother ride. And as you guys can see, as I shake this, it's actually shaking the entirety of the Accord. So that means we're, we don't have any play in that system. All gonna be in line, making for a nicer, smoother ride for ourselves, our bike rack, but especially our bikes, which is great for ourselves. And you just have a little retaining clip on the inside of there to keep it held in place, nothing too crazy. Um, and I know I said uh, earlier that my biggest thing was it not being able to tilt away. My second biggest thing, I guess I would say, is gonna be the security element on this guy. 
that doesn't come with any cable locks, it doesn't come with a hitch lock, and you know, that kind of stinks, uh, for sure. It's nice to go ahead and make sure that we actually have this secured to our vehicle. Now, there are accessories you can buy here at eTrailer.com. It'll be right there in that related parts tab. If you're looking for a way of adding uh, locks on here, that can definitely be a recommended item, as it's gonna be nice to make sure that we have that peace of mind that our bike rack is gonna be with our vehicle when we leave it unattended, and doubly so for our bikes. Um, that would be the big one for me. You might not be able to, need, you might not need uh, that hitch lock, but just having a bike lock can be huge of making sure that they stay on here. Just too easy for somebody to walk up, pinch, walk off that arm, and walk off with your bike. Um, definitely something I would tend to uh, try to avoid. So that's the only thing with the XE2. Other than that, though, guys, it, it, it's great. You know, it's. It's definitely not your top of the line carrier, but it's gonna get you and your bikes where you wanna go. Definitely, if I'm gonna be start looking at biking uh, come next summer, trying to get back in shape, uh, this is definitely gonna be one of my go-tos. I'm definitely gonna try it out. I recommend it to all my friends too who are asking me, what should I be getting if I'm just starting to get into biking? This is a great first step. Of course, you can always go up to the stratosphere with those nice premium options but this is gonna be a great little way of getting you started. Well guys, I think that that about does it for our look here today at the Swagman XC2 here on the back of our 2012 Honda Accord. I'm Bobby, thank you for watching. This is our test course. Let's start with the slalom. This shows side to side action, such as turning corners or evasive maneuvering. Then onto our alternating speed bumps. This shows twisting action, such as hitting curbs, potholes, road debris, or even uneven pavement. Last of all, the solid speed bumps. This shows up and down action, such as driving through a parking lot or parking garage, or driving in and out of a driveway.